Well, as a project manager, we can apply different different frameworks for development, right? Um, it could be waterfall, which is you get all the requirements at the beginning. Okay. Could be iterative, and in each iteration, we add something. I mean, we learn something, and we keep following the same iterations again and again. Mm -hmm. In incremental, we keep adding functionality. So we are building a phone. We add one feature in this release. We add another feature in the next release. Right? Adapting to the customer is the best, right? Because um, this is what we have created. You go and do whatever you want, Mr. Customer. Right? Versus we're going to adapt ourselves to what exactly you need, Mr. Customer. Mm -hmm. as you go along which one do you think is a good thing in real life being agile being agile right be, being able to mm -hmm. adapt uh, to the customer needs earlier what would happen is oh no no, no 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 we signed this sow with you we are not even going to talk to the customer we're going to sit here and my team will work on it and deliver you the final product yeah but the final product is as the customer says what is this i didn't even want this oh my god this is not at all what i thought in mind so that's why engaging the customer right in the beginning and engaging them often is the key. That is why we need adaptive life cycles, which are change driven. So you will see the approach changes from the top to the bottom. And then lastly, hey, we can have both. We can, we are building a house. If you go and see my house in Fremont, like 10 houses, all 10 of them look similar. So where is agile, right? <laughs> it, it is waterfall. But within yeah. each house, you can have a different chandelier, you can have a different uh, window style, you can have different paint color. I, I think that would be an example of a uh, hybrid project because even though you're for, following waterfall to create them, you're applying agile to um, adapt to the individual user. It's like you put your plan in place already. You lay out your entire project structure and be open for like um, changes as well. Like in your scope, define what are the areas that could probably be bound to change and you would be accepting change and stakeholders or everybody involved in that project would be able to accept change. Yeah, yeah. And also think like in, if, if you live in a house, which most of us yeah. do, that house before it was created, there was a blueprint. Yeah. Right? And based on the blueprint was the budget. Yeah. Because you want to know, I'm going to buy this house, how much it's going to cost? Or you bought a land and you want to construct a house there. So even before you buy the land or the house, you want to know how much is the cost. Right? So, but the house is exactly as per the blueprint. Yeah. I told you to build a door here. Why did you not build a door here? No, 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 we couldn't find a door, so we put a window here. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna give you money for that because you moved away from my design. Mm. That is kind of waterfallish. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's okay, you put a window here, <laughs> I'm fine with it. But I still need a door because I, I wanna enter the building and come out of the building. Oh, I put it here, that's fine. That is kind of agile and adaptive. Dr. Sam, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so the iterative is, um, is it kind of like, you know, you plan something similar to waterfall, but the execution would be iterative? Uh, how is it different from the waterfall, Dr. Sam? See, I would say that iteration is like a sprint, right? In the agile world, we call yeah. it sprint. But what is iteration? Iteration is a time box, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine... We are going to do this in next two weeks. Mm. And in every next two weeks, we will follow the same system. Delivering something else. Something of value. Okay. So iteration is a time box of, let's say, four weeks each time. Mm. Right? And four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, you have five of them for a particular release. Okay. So in each iteration, like, for example, we'll build a um google chrome right 
and I don't know much about Google Chrome, but she will tell us what are those five components that are very important. So in each iteration, but we will have to build something of value. Okay. Right? We cannot say, oh, we created the box, but inside the box, we'll build the product, which will go inside. So box doesn't deliver value. If it doesn't, then it is not an artifact or deliverable that you created. Deliverable has to have value. So basically, yeah, the difference between iterative and agile is that the scope is defined in terms of iterative, but in case of agile, the scope can be different. Can I can give one example of that. How sometimes in iterative, it's like you are kind of building something, but you are not. It's not fully ready. So you take it in bits and pieces and you do it over and over again till you find stability in that. And then you move on to the next part of it. And then you work on that part and add it to the previous part. And that's why your time and cost both are revisited every time. Like, okay, we did this part in this much time over and over. Now we have stability in that. We are adding more. Can we add it with the previous one? Or we take that as a separate iteration and then do the same cycle over and over. Or we do the first one with the second one. Mm -hmm. and then do those as iterations now again okay. Oh, okay okay yeah that makes a lot of sense and also when i'm hearing monica i'm thinking that hey incremental means functionality and feature that you're building gradually iteration means process that oh we're following the same process again and again yeah. so agile is an iterative and incremental framework right so Agile says, follow a time box four weeks and show me what you can do. Mm -hmm. And each iteration, add one feature is incremental. Right. Yeah. Imagine in the last release, we had six features. In the next release, we have 10 features. Right? So Iti, I have a question for you. Uh, when you say uh, SNP 5, SNP, you mean SNP 500? Um, so basically SNP Global has five divisions. Uh, they do have uh, smaller divisions as well. So main five div divisions. So I was part of the market intelligence, which is uh, the data providing, not the credit ratings of the 500, but the market intelligence. For example, when I click on, uh, like I have a TD Ameritrade account where I do all my trading on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. And then I see market watch. So they will get me what happened today in Tesla. Okay. Help me make, no, I'm asking you a question. Right will help me make a decision should I buy or sell or keep Tesla. Right, right. That intelligence is what you Market have. intelligence division, yes. So that will collect all the information as to what is, let us create a crawler which will crawl all over the engine, uh, through the engine into the industry and gather data on Tesla and present that in a way so it's going. Basically, um, Dr. Sam, so because of GDPR issues, um, uh, we usually do not have crawl, I mean, with SNP, uh, they usually do not have crawlers because of the privacy, data privacy laws and issues. So it goes through the uh, lot of legal team, et cetera, if they have to set up crawlers. So uh, there are in-house teams, which are basically collecting all the data from the secondary sources and uh, which are uh, not, uh, and there are no copyright issues. So there are uh, dedicated teams which are collecting the data and actually putting that entire data uh, in the system. Besides this, they have, I mean, SNP has a policy uh, in case they can't build anything by themselves from the scratch, they acquire a company. So like 451 research or um, like many other acquisitions that they've done in the past. So they acquire a company. As a result, they get a ready-made, um, database, uh, uh, I mean, uh, already built database in order to provide that data. So like recently they've acquired IHS market. I mean, in February, 2022, they'd closed the acquisition of uh, uh, IHS market. Because of that, they have now a lot of data with respect to the uh, engineering and oil market, et cetera. Now IHS market had a huge um, monopoly over um, public offerings and private placement. So that is how they built. So uh, what you are talking about is definitely the data, either it's going to be um, in-house uh, ingested or via an acquisition. Yeah, because what I'm thinking in my mind that at the end of the day, uh, whatever we do has to create some business value, right? Absolutely. So what is that business value that was, and so this is what I perceive that 
because as a user, when I log into my account into Ameritrade and I have to make a decision to sell a stock, or buy a stock or hold a stock, uh, there's an item there which says market intelligence and it shows me a lot of information from Moody's, from you know so many places which tells me about what is happening in the market with respect to this particular stock and I make, make a decision. So that is what I'm perceiving. I understand when you say GDPR issues because GDPR is Europe, right? And uh, S&P is an American company. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, that could be a requirement for a regulatory requirement from an environment perspective when we deliver a project in Europe, right? Um, so GDPR by GDPR, I actually meant the overall data and privacy laws that are there. So irrespective of whether any um, country has explicit laws or not, but uh, being a, a global organization, definitely. Awesome, very good.